<laughs> Welcome to the Amateur's Edge, guys. We are we are in here cooking with gas today, and um, it's just me and my main man, Jerrion, holding it down. Randy is... Good morning, I, 1010 XL. Yeah, R- Randy is doing great stuff out there. Um, yeah, I must admit, man, I kind of miss Randy, man. You know, I, I know you I, miss I don't Randy. have anybody to pick up. Okay, brother. I know you Yeah, I'm going to put you on hold here, Remy, and let him know that you're here, okay? The tight pant bandit himself. The, the, the tight pants bandit himself. It's... Uh, it's okay though, but man, man, what's going on in the sports world, man? Uh, man, you know, uh, you know, these past couple of weeks we've been having conversations about Mbappe and that enormous contract that he's been offered, and him turning it down. Insane, and insane amount of money, and you know, it just led me down this path where I, I wanted to understand the soccer world a little bit more. You know, over the years we've had the opportunity to work with uh, numerous soccer academies. Right. Um, we were a part of the Amarda when they first started. We were one of the, you know, the, the companies that, you know, got started with that. And it just took me down this rabbit hole. And I wanted to understand a little bit more about the soccer world. And, and you know, especially knowing how talent rich we are from an athletic standpoint. Absolutely. You know, you know America, bar none, produces the best athletes. And, 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 and I had a bunch of questions. One, you know, just trying to understand the financial side a little bit more and how mm-hmm. how is it that these guys are making this enormous amount of money, one. But two... Why are we as a country so far behind? Yeah, those it's, are some good questions because they they make real money. They make real money. They make real money. So I employed some of my uh, soccer people. We got three guys coming on today um, to, to give their perspective on, from from a business side as well as the development side. So it's going to be a good show today um, as we address that. And we actually got one guy on the line right now. Uh, Rami, Rami, you there? Can you guys hear me? Yep, yep. How, How you doing you today, man? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. Oh man, thanks for coming on, man. Just just so people know who you are, uh, Rami is a graduate from Jacksonville University. He was the MVP of the team that went to the second round of the NCAA's. Uh, he played professionally for the Carolina Railhawks and the Jacksonville Armada, um, and actually scored against the Argentinian uh, side Boca Juniors in the TIA Bank. And uh, you know he has a huge huge uh, uh, understanding of the sport of soccer, has been training the past 10 years. And so, I, again, I wanted to get Remy's opinion, Remy's opinion about soccer and the state of it in American sport. And also, Remy, you know, coming from where you come from, give us a little bit of a, a, a take on, you know, how different things are here versus, you know, where you're from. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's very different. Um, I remember when I was 17, I moved to Jacksonville. And there was not much professional soccer that was going on in the United States. MLS was very new. There was not much money made. I remember players would get contracts for $12,000 a year, basically $1,000 a month, and they would be living with a host family. Wow. Uh, so this is, this is not long ago. This is 20 years ago. And uh, today, uh, MLS has drastically changed. Obviously, you guys know Messi has come. Uh, I think the major change happened when uh, we signed David Beckham. Uh, I think it was LA Galaxy that signed David Beckham. At that change in MLS and brought a lot of attention and money to the league. And um, after that, with this new signing of Messi, it's got and World Cup coming to states uh, in I think 2026, I believe. Uh, that's going imp- to you know impact the game a lot more. So. Um, you know, but uh, everything is changing around the world. So um, I, you really have to be more specific with uh, what country you're talking about. Right now, Saudis are throwing money like there is no end to it. Uh, soccer is growing rapidly everywhere. That's, so let me ask you, why, why do you think Mbappe turned down that contract? Uh you talk about the contract from Saudis, right? Yeah, yeah the seven hundred and seventy million dollar contract for one year. I don't know, man. <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> I think maybe uh, he's regretting it now. Maybe I, I don't think uh, anybody can pay that much money in any other league, any any other country. It was just for one year, also after that year, because right now he has one more year. Uh, left in, on his contract with PSG, uh, Paris Saint-Germain, which is in Paris. Cool. And 
Saudi League wanted to give him that much money for only for one year. And after that, he could have left and gone to Real Madrid, wherever he likes to go. I think, I think the, the main reason would be actual soccer. The, you know, the game uh, in Saudi Arabia in the league is very new, doesn't have the status that, uh, you know, Real Madrid has per se. You know, Real Madrid is the greatest team of all time but based on their records and winning so many Champions League. I mean, the soccer, the motherland for soccer is Europe. So I think he wants to play his prime in Europe and get to, uh, you know, uh, because they have a lot of money. I mean, not a $700 million, uh, but I think he, money is not his main objective. He wants to enjoy the game that he's so good at it in the highest level, and that is offered in Europe, not in Saudi. Yeah, definitely. I, and I'm I'm just trying to wrap my mind around it too, because I see that Messi actually turned down the a huge contract. They was offering him something like 1.6 billion over three years. It, yeah. is, is the play over there that bad in Saudi? Uh, it's yeah, of course compared to. Uh, I mean, not compared to MLS per se. I think uh, compared to MLS, the league sh- shouldn't be that far behind, even though MLS has developed a lot lately. But I think um, you got to realize these players, they made so much money, and they, especially Messi, he's at the end of his career. He really loves Miami. He comes for vacationing to Miami. And uh, they put a package together that included the lifestyle that Miami offers, <laughs> the friendship that he has in Miami, you know, some of his older, play, you know, his peers from Barcelona joining him, like Jordi Alba and Sergio Busquets, who's playing with him right now, Sergio Busquets. Uh, so it was more than just money. It was the whole, his family living somewhere that he feels comfortable. They love Miami. They vacation there. And uh, they give him a good deal. They, they signed, he signed a contract that could be as lucrative as Michael Jordan's, uh, you know, uh, contract with Adidas for the Jordans. So, you know, you never know. He may actually end up making more money than he would have in Saudi. Oh, that's huge. That's huge, man. Well, hey, man, look, man, I appreciate you hopping on today, man. It, it was great to get your perspective, man. And, um, and again, thanks for hopping on. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, man. You guys have a great day. All Bye-bye. Right, you too, buddy. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Man, I, I didn't get a chance to ask him. I wanted to know if he would have taken that seven hundred million dollar. Contract. What you need to ask is, what would you do with that money? Man. Like, what would you do with that much money? Dude, that's and for money. one year, and like so, one so and the, done. And so the thing is, too, um, Mbappe's already making one hundred and twenty pounds. 120 million pounds a year. One hundred twenty million pounds. That's like about one hundred and fifty million U.S. Oh, already. Right. So how much money, how much more money do you need? So if, if I'm looking at it from his perspective, mm. right, um, I'm 24 years old. I'm already making $100 million a year. I'm on track to be considered one of the greatest of all of time. Of all time. Do I want to impede on that one, have that one year impede on my progress? Because that's what they're saying. That's like when you talk <laughs> to most people, that's what they're saying. Like the consensus is, you know, he want, he's on track to be, you know, the greatest of all time. And that one year could possibly set him back. And 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 here's the thing: if he's that great, maybe that seven hundred million dollar opportunity will be available another time. It's possible. May, maybe, it's but possible. I don't know. I don't know if I would have risked the, the, taking a chance. I think I would have gone ahead and taken seven hundred <laughs> million dollars and all that. But uh, listen, I think it's about time for us to pay some bills, man. Um, and on the other side, we got some 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 great guys that we're going to be talking to. Mm-hmm. About this same thing, this uh, talking about uh, the power of soccer and why we really don't have that kind of a presence here in the United States. So uh, let's rock and roll. This segment was brought to you by uh, Premier Physical Therapy. Your wellness journey begins at Premier Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, the gold standard in orthopedic and sports rehab for adults and adolescents alike. Dial 904-996-6922. Or visit PremierPTJax.com today for the Premier Experience. You're listening to The Amateur's Edge on 1010XL 92.5 FM. A judge has a gavel. I've got a hammer. I'm Hayes Carlion. It's Hammer Time with Hayes. Weekdays on the Frangie Show on 1010XL. 
brought to you by Golden Hammer Roofing and Gutters, the golden standard in roofing. School is out and the kids are at home. This means more stress on your septic system. Call Duck Duck Rooter and get your septic tank pumped out. 904-862-6769. That's 904-862-6769. Digital has you covered for any of your business's digital marketing needs. From producing award-winning videos to getting those digital ads to follow your customers around the internet, our team has your back. Visit 3ddigital.com or give us a call at 904-712-4004 to schedule a free consultation today. 904-712-4004. Old City Football is back. Get the latest on your favorite players with 1010XL's training camp coverage. Brought to you by Roland Leash Plumbing and Kingfish Pest Control. Let's get the work done. Nobody covers camp like 1010XL. Business owners know Andy's Automotive and Truck Services. For routine fleet maintenance or emergency repairs, Andy's offers after hours and mobile service to minimize downtime and keep your fleet on the road. Visit andysats.com. Come to Bowden Eye for all your eye care needs. Hicken here, did you know that dry eye disease affects up to 60 million Americans? Dry eye disease is known to progress. Dry eye disease is one of the most common but least diagnosed eye conditions doctors see in their patients. Many of us who have dry eye may not even feel it. At Bowden Eye & Associates, visit today for your personal consultation. Keeping the first coast focused. Bowden Eye & Associates, new location now open of County Road 210 in St. Johns County. Major League Baseball is always on at Perfect Rag Billiards in Murray Hill. Whether you're a Ray, Cub, or even Yankee, Perfect Rag Billiards always has all the games live. Tons of awesome beer and food specials for the weekend. From Fireball Fridays, Seltzer Saturdays, and Brunch on Sundays. That along with tons of pool tables, shuffle boards, darts, and more. Get on out of the house for the action and come to Perfect Rag Billiards in Murray Hill where you can catch all the MLB action. Perfect Rag Billiards in Murray Hill, a great place to watch sports. Want to help improve the lives of women and make sure that all survivors of sexual assault are treated with compassion and respect? Join Farrah and Farrah and the Women's Center of Jacksonville at the summer's biggest breakfast, Thrive, on August 22nd to learn how to pick up the pieces after life throws you a curveball. The Women's Center of Jacksonville is a valuable community resource offering free services when they are needed the most, but they need your support. Visit the WCJ.org for more information on Thrive. Hey, it's Matt Hayes, and I said yes to YAS, Dr. Mitchell YAS, and the YAS Method. Now I know, you've probably tried medications, treatments, injections, even surgery. Maybe the reason you're still in pain is because they're treating the wrong thing and not addressing the root causes. Well, I know from personal experience, this does happen. But I found the best kept secret in pain elimination, Dr. Yass and the Yass Method. Call them today, 904-906-YASS and say yes to Yass. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, the official personal injury law firm of the Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville, this is the Amateur's Edge. Brought to you by B3 Better on 1010XL. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, glad to have you here. Uh, let's go ahead and, and get this thing popping. We, we are talking today about soccer. You know, soccer um, Soccer is the number one sport in the world. Soccer athletes are making insane amounts of money. I mean, like the average salary is anywhere between, what, three to five million dollars. That's, 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 that's on the low end. That's, yeah, that's, 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 that's insane. On the, on, on the high end, we're talking about, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars. Just, just insane. So, you know, we're, we're talking about, like, why is, you know, why doesn't, Soccer have such a, a major impact here in the U.S. as it does all over the world. And uh, in this segment, we, we're we going to have an amazing guy on, uh, Sean McGarvey. He's uh, with Relevant Sports. and they He put, was with Oh, he, work, he was. Yeah. Okay. He was with Relevant Sports, and they put on these huge pre, uh, preseason events, these tournaments all over the world. So this is a... This guy has been on an international stage when it came to when it comes to soccer, and so to be ha have him on today with us is absolutely amazing. So I look forward to hearing from him. Welcome to the show, Sean. How you doing today, man? 
Hey guys, I'm great. Thanks for having me. Good, good deal, good deal, man. Um, you know, I was, you know, talking to the audience a little bit earlier about, you know, this this uh this rabbit hole I went down this week, you know, just trying to understand a little bit more about soccer and the economics or what have you. And it led me to a conversation that I had with you earlier this week, Sean, and you were telling me about FIBA and, you know, how it controls uh, uh, so much of soccer and, you know, the selling of contracts and things like that or what have you. So, you know, you know, my first question is, again, you know, looking at soccer a as a global sport and you're looking at the amount of money these athletes make, like how how does how how are these guys making this much more? I'm talking about they're making way more money than NBA players, NFL players, MLB players. I mean, it's like a whole nother level. Where, where is all this coming from? Well, it's uh, it's it's coming from a few places, but I would I would say that the the number one driver of it has generally been television revenue. Mm -hmm. So you know, come next May when you know you and me we all sit down at you know, noon or so to watch the UEFA Champions League and, um, you know, watch the finals. You know, we're used to, you know, hearing TV audiences that span, you know, across the whole country. So, you know, three, four hundred million people watching the Super Bowl. These guys are measuring their TV audiences in billions. Um, in you billions? know, you have folks in billions. Yes, you, you get folks from all across Asia, the Middle East, Australia, regardless of the time, you know, they're waking up and they're tuning in. Um, and so these TV contracts are gigantic. And um, I don't have any specific numbers off the top of my head, but if you go back, you know, and look over the last five to 10 years, just here in the States, what stations like NBC Sports or Fox Sports have paid for, you know, whether it's the Premier League rights or Champions League rights, the numbers are astounding. Crazy. And then when you watch those games, it looks like it's about 100,000 people in those right. stadiums, man. Those, those, stadiums, those arenas have to be huge. <laughs> Crazy. Absolutely. The, so, you, the arenas are gigantic, and, you know, they are, you know, sold out every week with a, you know, five- to ten-year wait list just to get on the season crazy. ticket. You know, that's season crazy. ticket. crazy. Five to ten year wait list. Are you it's, yeah, un, un, unbelievable. And in you know, in in certain cases, different clubs are structured differently. So Barcelona, FC Barcelona, where Messi played for, for example, uh, has some equity ownership that is actually owned and controlled by fans. Mm. That's crazy. And so what? With the events that you guys used to put on, um, what would the average attendance be at those events? Um, we aim to sell out a stadium, you know, every every time we put on a game. Um, the largest game I was ever a part of, and, you know, you've got to keep in mind this is technically preseason, but in, I believe it was 2014, Real Madrid played Manchester United in Ann Arbor, Michigan, at the Big House. And mm. we sold it out 111000 And I'm not sure if it's still the case, but at the time, that was the highest attended soccer match in the United States history. Mm -hmm. that's, um, but, 100, 000, you know, there's... That's huge. That's, that's insane. It's unbelievable. Um, and, you know, they've, they've since gone on and... Uh, I, I didn't see any attendance numbers, but I imagine they did great. They had Real Madrid play Barcelona in Dallas at uh, AT and T at Jerry's World just a week ago, and you know I, I would be more than willing to bet that there were you know eighty eighty five thousand plus in that stadium. That's sick. That is sick. Now, now as with contracts, I see that you know these guys. Ha or these teams, should I say, they have the opportunity to, like, sell players off and, you know, pay other teams to be able to negotiate with players and things like that. Can you explain that a little bit more to the audience uh, as far as how sure. these contracts and how that work? Sure, sure, sure. So when a player signs with a club and, um, you know, th the numbers obviously will vary based on the player's, you know, quality. But um, in 
every player contract, what the contracting club will do is they'll put in what they call a release clause. And essentially that means if, you know, we end up in a situation where you have somebody, you know, like Mbappe now who wants to leave Paris Saint-Germain, well, written in his contract is going to be a dollar amount that says, if Mbappe wants to leave and another club wants to, you know, purchase his playing rights, they've got to pay, you know, X amount. And with somebody like Mbappe, that number is probably, you know, it's in the hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, I believe when Cristiano Ronaldo signed with Real Madrid, his release clause was a billion euro. Oh, my good, good, good. And And so, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, essentially, what will happen is... Now, is that um, for him you know, or is that for the club? It's for the club. That's not well, even that, 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 would be, that would be for the club. That is just for... Uh, uh, the billion dollars <laughs> just gives another team the ability to negotiate with Ronaldo. So, hold on. So, when you say negotiate... <laughs> that doesn't that guarantee mean, that he accepts that the contract. Are you saying that... Correct. Now, Correct. has that happened before where a team paid a gazillion dollars to negotiate with an athlete and they said no? Generally, no. They'll, you know, they'll, they'll do them, you know, the, the, they'll sort of walking the two paths, you know, step by step. Um, but you, you know, you certainly had, you know, situations like, you know, like Mbappe where I imagine that Paris Saint-Germain would have been more than happy to take the 750 million euro from the Saudis <laughs> to let him go. Mm-hmm. But you know, he obviously did not doesn't you know did not want to go to Saudi Arabia. Dude, but just like you just like you're saying though, you got to imagine that there has to be a lot of behind the scenes, under the table deal making going on in order for me to Eight. tell you, I'm gonna give you a billion dollars to talk to this guy. A ton. <laughs> so a ton. It, it has to be like I have to know that's a lot of I, risk but you got to know you're going to sign that guy in order to pay that money like again Ab- there has to be absolutely. some behind the scene under the table stuff that we don't know about that they're not supposed to be doing so the but, crazy thing to me is that there's it's a billion dollars to to begin the negotiation process which you know 95 percent of the time looks like that they're going to have some type of an arrangement then the contract for somebody like Mbappe would be what on top of the billion dollars? What would that? Oh, you got to imagine he's probably going to want you know Cristiano Ronaldo money, so you know several several hundred million to go play in in Saudi Arabia. Um, I, I don't think the numbers would be will be quite as high coming from other clubs in Europe um, because there's a little more incentive to join those clubs from a competition standpoint. Um, but, but yeah, you, I would imagine the Saudis probably, you know, put a 300 million euro plus annual salary on the table for him. Man, that's huge, man. <laughs> and that's per year. No, Correct. no, no that no. is per year. Hold on. No, the 300 mil is what they were going to pay up front just to talk to him. And then they were paying Mbappe 770 mil for that one year. So it's going to cost them over a <laughs> billion dollars to have him for that one year. That's insane. Crazy. <laughs> so, so unbelievable. Explain this to me too. I was I've been following a little bit uh uh with the dispute between Saint Germain and Mbappe. So what's going on with that whole situation? Um they're not allowing him to play because he wants to leave. Well, they're 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 basically in a bit of a stalemate. What Mbappe wants is what he really wants is to win the UEFA Champions League. He wants to win a European Cup. He has never won it, and that is, if you know, you want to be considered one of the greatest of all time, you need to have at least one Champions League under your belt. Cristiano Ronaldo has, I believe, five, and at one point won three in a row. Mm. Messi has four or five, and so it's it's just, you know, it, it, it would be like, trying to be considered in, you know, the, the NBA GOAT talk and not having won an NBA title. Gotcha. And so Mbappe's, I, I think his whole motivation right now is to win a Champions League, and he believes he has the best chance to do that at a club like Real Madrid or Barcelona as opposed to 
Paris Saint Germain where he is right now. But Paris Saint Germain, they're they're a pretty big time club, man. They can't bring in any big time players. They they certainly can. Um, I, you know, I, I don't specifically know, you know, what might be, you know, sort of leading him, you know, in other directions. Um, but no, they, they certainly can. I mean, you know, we're talking about oil money. Paris Saint Germain is owned by the Qataris. And so Mbappe has his, you know, his own oil mogul signing his checks right now. Gotcha. 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 It's crazy, man. Again, you know, the amount of money being tossed around to these guys and uh, the opportunities that's there. And, you know, he's only 24 years old. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, it's crazy. It's 24 crazy. years old. So he has a lot of soccer left. In so him. Now, now, but now now that, you know, now that he says this, it, it kind of puts it in perspective. It, it, he rather have he rather have a championship title. Definitely. Than yeah. 700 million. Definitely. At, at at 24 years old right now, yes, he he's he wants the the trophies as opposed to all of the money. Yeah, and I would imagine, man, when you when you chasing greatness and you just locked in, that money is not that important. That money don't matter, right? Right. Because because if I'm him, I'm looking at five or six rings. I'm not just looking at one, even though you got to take it one and year at a tw- time. Yeah, and he's 24. he's 24. What's the average age? How long do you know? Do I mean, how old is Messi now? Messi about what 37. Yeah, Messi and oh. Ronaldo, they're both he in has, their he upper has an 30s. Eternity. He has an eternity. But that time go by quick, man. I remember, you know, when uh, Dan Marino <laughs> took the, the uh, Dolphins to the Super Bowl as a rookie, everybody's like, oh, he got plenty of time. He's never been back again. <laughs> you know, so you you just never know. You're right. You're you, right. you never know. So, But, Sean, man, thanks for hopping on, man. I really appreciate you calling in. Of course, guys. Thank you. All right, man. Have a good one. You too. Man, this is, man, this is wild, man. Like... Just to just just to have this kind of information about you know how much money is in this this sport is unbelievable and the number of people the number of eyes can you imagine having a football a football team where you got a five year wait just to go to a actual game that's crazy <laughs> I can't imagine <laughs> that man like, all right the Jags are sold out for the next five years that's crazy that's kind of how uh, Green Bay they're sold out for some time for for a couple of years. Wow. Yeah, Green Bay, you got yeah, you gotta be on the waiting list. The only way you get in a game at Green Bay is if you know somebody. That's crazy. Well, let's pay some bills, man. Yes, sir. Let's do that. Uh this segment was brought to you by Premier Physical Therapy. Your wellness journey begins at Premier Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, the gold standard in orthopedic and sports rehab for adults and adolescents alike. Dial 904 996 6922 or <coughs> Visit PremierPTJax.com today for the Premier Experience. You're listening to The Amateur's Edge on 1010XL 92.5 FM. The All-Pro Roofing Phone Line protects you from boring radio. Hello? What are you doing here? I don't know. Listen for great phone interviews all day on the All-Pro Roofing Phone Line. The calls have been pouring in. On 1010XL. Hi, my name is Will Landreth, and I'm Truist Market President here in Jacksonville, and we're proud to partner with the Jacksonville Business Journal to support the 2023 Fast 50 Award. At Truist, we believe that the dreams for tomorrow's growth are built by hard work done today, and this year's honorees have demonstrated just that. So please join us in the Jacksonville Business Journal on September 21st for the Fast 50 Awards as we celebrate the 2023 honorees for their continued hard work and dedication to growth and development. For more information on the event, visit jbjevent.com. We look forward to seeing you there. Go Jags. I want my Woody's barbecue. Have you ever noticed that some words that were once nouns are now verbs? Like Google? Instead of going to Google, you just Google it. Well, I did that the other day with Woody's barbecue. Instead of going to Woody's for barbecue, I told the wife that tonight we're going to Woody it. She looked at me kind of funny at first, and then she smiled and said, Let's eat. At Woody's barbecue, it's what we do. Let's eat. We understand today's real estate challenges. With low inventory and high demand, you need a mortgage partner who can help navigate your financial needs. Bank of England Mortgage takes pride in helping clients make informed decisions. From application to closing, every step of the loan process is made in their local branch. For more information, go to boejax.com or call 992-1000. Bank of England Mortgage is a division of Bank of England. NMLS 418481. Equal housing lender. Member FDIC. 
I open the door and take you inside the locker room to get you closer to the field the players and coaches you care about. Get a look at Hayes' blog on 1010XL.com. My blog is brought to you by Roland Reese Plumbing, where quality and experience count. Oh boy, not again. Do you feel this way every time there's rain in the forecast? Amy Salt, owner of CrossFit Salt to Tear in the Riverside area, definitely did. I had major rain anxiety from all the water collecting outside my gym. That's why I'm so happy I reached out to Clearwater Drainage. John came out, designed a system that moved the water off of my property, and all my kettlebells are now dry. I'm sleeping so much better at night. Clearwater Irrigation. And drainage, too. Clearwaterjacks.com. Need cash? Beaches Jewelry and Pawn has cash available. Ready to buy guitars, surfboards, jewelry, firearms, tools, and especially gold. They need it all. Selling or pawning, get cash on the spot at Beaches Jewelry and Pawn in Jacksonville Beach. Instant Keys. You don't have to go to the dealer. Instant Keys comes to you. For lost or broken keys or nearly any make and model of vehicle, call 722-1111 for Instant Keys Locksmith Service. Mark Watson with Hardball Creative. What's better than beer? Cold beer. Put your company logo on a custom koozie. Check them out at hardballcreative.com. Hardball Creative. Hardball does it all. The best golfing weather is upon us, and the Hidden Hills Golf Club invites you to enjoy your round of golf with us. Our warm and welcoming atmosphere and spectacular golf course keeps our customers coming back. Check us out at HiddenHillsGC.com. You'll be glad you did. 1010XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, the official personal injury law firm of the Jaguars, protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville, the Amateur's Edge. Brought to you by B3 Better on 1010XL. And we're back. And today we are talking about soccer. Jay, you know, soccer is the number one sport in the entire world. And these soccer athletes are making insane amounts of money. So, um, you know, we've had some great, great guests on this morning talking about this amazing sport. And uh, hopefully this next guy is going to help us kind of get a perspective on on. Why why isn't soccer so big here? And uh, his name is Matt. Matt Sir Mac. He's he's an amazing guy. Uh, he's the owner of Heights Soccer Academy. Uh, played at Florida Tech, and he's professional uh, uh, and professional PDL division with Orlando Ajax and Coco Expos. Been coaching for the last ten years with Space Coast uh, United and Clay County Soccer Club. So. Listen, I'm glad to have him on, man. Uh, Matt, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Thanks for having me. Matt, my man, how you doing today? I'm doing well, man. Just uh, enjoying this uh, nice Saturday we have going on. So. Cool, 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 man. So, yeah, man, you know, me, me and Matt had a great conversation, you know, the other day just talking about soccer and youth sports. And, you know, again, I'm like, man, they, they handing out too much money around the world in soccer. How do we get our kids? How, how do we get? We, listen, switch these kids up. Take that basketball <laughs> out of his hand. Let's get it out of his <laughs> hand. And so, and so, um, ball get, to the feet. Let's go. <laughs> and, and most people don't like understand, you know, what's going on in in the youth world and in, in the soccer world. Um, myself included. Well, I understand to a certain extent, but just wanted to understand, you know, uh, from a developmental standpoint, where we stand and how do we get to that next level, Matt? Yeah. Um. Hundred percent, man. I think uh, when you look at the state of play in the United States, um, it's kind of taken a while for you know parents to actually understand the game, right? So um, if you look at baseball, you look at football, you look at a lot of these American sports, right? Like every parent probably knows a little bit about it. Um, every parent has a you know a little bit of a pointer they can give out or something they saw. And one thing that I notice is I do a lot of education with my parents. Um, let them know what I'm seeing, what I want from them, um, and really just try to create that support system that other sports provide um, when they get off the soccer field, um, and or, or when they get off the other, you know, the court or you know the football field, where that parent might have an abundance of knowledge of playing experience. Where when you're looking at soccer, we don't really have that kind of luxury um, yet. Um, you're starting to see some parents that are, you know, really involved and understand the game and they have that kind of leg up and you can see those, you know, those, those players really getting that, um, 
that passion already in there, right? Like uh, a lot of what uh, I talk about is, is, you know, you got to love what you do. Um, mm-hmm. it, it, you know, if you're loving what you're doing, it doesn't really, it's not really hard work. Right. So, mm-hmm. um, when you, when you talk about, you know, football or, so- or sorry, soccer, you know, these kids coming in with a, you know, already passion from their parents, they may have like their favorite soccer team. They may have, you know, the, a, a wealth of knowledge already going into the game. They have like a little passion or they have like almost like a passed down passion from their parents, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. when you look at the Europe models and you look at around the world, I mean, those parents are diehard footy fans, right? Like they, they're huge. Like they love, they, they, they love a club. They, they understand the game. They're talking to their kids about it. And we're starting to see that. Like you're starting to see like America kind of like, all right, this is kind of cool, right? Um, and I think when that starts to happen, you know, give us 10 years when all these kids are, are coming that, I mean, cause we're developing quite well in the United States. If, uh, if, um, if you ask me, we're doing quite well, but once they're starting to have kids, I think you're really going to start to see, you know, that kind of shift with the knowledge being passed down a little bit, you know? So how far behind do you think we are, man? I, honestly, I mean, I, I had a, a conversation with my buddy, Jimmy the other day. Um, and we were talking about development, right? And a lot of our U.S. teams, our youth teams, do very well um, against these European academies, mm. right? And I think me and you had this conversation as well, uh, and, and Jimmy brought this point up, is you know, where we're really missing is that development after they turn 18, like the ones that go to college. You know, they're three months, they're training, and then they have six months off, and they have a month, and then they're summer. When you look in the Europe model, you know, those youth kids, when they go to 17, 18 years old, they're still training year round. So the time on the ball, the time around the game and the, the actual development is carrying on to another level. Like our youth, our youth players are quite good. I mean, um, so they compete. You know, some, so are you saying yeah, all the way oh, up until yeah. they're 18 years old, they compete with these other kids around we the world? We are. We are competing okay. there. Yeah. And, and to be fair, if you really look at like, you know, our model when it comes to like going to college and whatnot, you know, there's restrictions, right? The NCAA has restrictions on the amount they can train, things they can do. Um, so it really kind of hinders that development after that 18 years of age. Um, and that's, that's where I think we're seeing. And, and, and to, the, to that point, that was my buddy, Jimmy, that, that brought that up. It made a lot of sense to me. I'm like, wow, I never really thought of it like that, but it's so true. Like these players are getting year round training where, you know, during the NCAA regulations, you know, maybe they're only out four or five months, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's a huge difference in, you know, you know, in time on the ball, time around your team, you know, and development post uh, youth ranks in America. Yeah, those reps count. They definitely count. Yeah. You know, um, and also, and correct me if I'm wrong, they identify these kids at a very young age over there and put them in academies. Yeah, they do. I mean, they, they definitely do. Like, the model's different. Um, you know, when, when you identify that and you're, you're going and, and you're, you're taking care of these kids are training um, with top-level coaches and, and really have, you know, the, the, the ability to go and, and train for free as well, which is, you know, uh, which is nice if we had something like here. But unfortunately, that model, you know, right now does not work here. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, one of the things that, that I, I tell par- player, par- parents, players, um, anybody I really talk to, um, you know, our model here, um, you know, it is producing good players, but I don't care if you, if you play on a team that practices one day a week, a player that is on the ball at home, or, I mean, look at, look at basketball, right? Mm-hmm. Most of those players are probably in their neighborhood and they're just playing ball right? Having fun with their friends, playing ball, and they're getting better naturally. They're getting more athletic. They're learning how to shoot. They're, you know, they're really getting competitive. Um, They're gaining that grit, maybe, you know, talking smack Mm -hmm. to their friends. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you train one day a week with a team. If you're out there and you're training on your own, um, you're going to develop. You're going to, you're going to find, you know, ways to move your body. You're going to find special ways to be able to, um, you know, play the game. I mean, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I think I was listening to this podcast the other day, and it talked about this NBA player, and I think we said it was Kyrie Irving. Yep, um, where they, he didn't even have a center of a backboard for the basketball hoop, so he had to teach himself 
how to spin the ball off a certain angle in a rim and, and make, make a basket, right? Like Crazy. that to me special. That's, mm-hmm. that's, that's a kid that went and made something out of nothing. And, you know, we have these expectations in America and we have a lot of these things going on, but that kind of stuff right there, that grit to go out on your own and really train and really make a difference for yourself. And, and obviously the people that you surround yourself around, um, I don't think we can limit ourselves um, with that kind of action. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of the players that kind of get to that level where it's like an obsession that just like, you know, uh, going to the, going to the basketball courts. If you do that with soccer, you get a group of friends and you're doing that, you know, that you just, you're teaching yourself the game, you're playing, you're getting the repetitions. And uh-huh. until we kind of really have that kind of culture going around, I think we're a bit, you know, limited on, on the whole, you know, are we going to be in, uh, you know, a world dominant, you know, program. So, Yeah. And I'll take that a step for further yeah. and say that our best athletes don't play soccer. I mean okay. you, I mean you look at uh look at LeBron James. Imagine a six eight, two hundred and sixty pound guy playing Ford <laughs> on a soccer yeah. field running a four four forty, or you look at a Tyreek Hill, like our best athletes gravitate more to basketball and football. You know, um it, it's more tangible for them. Um, yeah, and, and to be quite frankly, to be quite frank, it's more affordable, right? Like to play at a high level, to play soccer at a high level, it is extremely expensive. And yeah, so, it's getting pricey, right? And, and yeah. So, and so when you, when you look at that, and and, and 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 you take that even a step further, you know, our most athletic kids come from the inner city. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. um, and, 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 you know, we talked about this the other day, you know, you know, a lot of them have that intrinsic drive to to get to the next level, to get up out of the hood. And and that's something that you can't really like teach. Right. That That's something that's intrinsically in them. So you take programs, I think, and you try to implement them in some of these lower income environments and teach these kids from grassroots right. the game of soccer. Just think if you so, were to grab LeBron James as a kid. Well, all right, so listen to this. Hear me out on this one, though. Brazil, Argentina, those kids are playing with the balls they made themselves in the streets. Like, I'm saying. same kind of concept, <laughs> wow. same kind of, you know what I mean? Same kind of, and they're creating some of the best players in the world's ever seen on the ball, technically, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, these kids are creating their own soccer balls, and they're playing in the slums of these third world mm-hmm. countries. Well, I uh, apologize if, if, you know, if that was offensive or anything, but at the end of the day, you know, they're creating world-class players there. You know, they don't have top-level coaches there. They just have these kids out there playing and playing. And I think, you know, that goes back to my statement. You know, I don't care if you're training one day a week with a team or three days a week, five days a week, right? It's what you're doing constantly, repetitions, learning your body, you know, going and playing um, and, and, and actually, you know, getting into the passion of it, right? Like, Mm -hmm. I guarantee you a lot of those boys love basketball. It's their life, right? Like, Mm -hmm. love football. It's life, right? Uh, Baseball. All you do is watch baseball. All they watch is is soccer or football. They watch their sport, right? And, uh, you know, the sky's the limit when you have that kind of mentality, right? Like, it's just like, you love it. It's not even, It's you don't even think about it. It's like, yep, going outside to play soccer. Or, yep, going outside to play basketball, right? It's like, it's just in them, you know? And that's, that's what what I'm talking about. It's like, you know, I, I think we have a, a big problem with video games, right? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. instead of going and training, you're probably out there, you know, just going to one practice a week, and you know, that was my practice. And then when I get home, you know, it's not really about the sport I just learned or anything. It's like, oh, I want to go watch TV or YouTube or you yeah, know, that's not going and those kind of that's not going yeah, to those kind of things will, will run in. And I'm not saying those are bad things, but. You know, at the end of the day, when we're talking about the development standpoint, you know, a lot of it is done at home. And we just, in America, we just don't have that setting. You know what I mean? Like, there's just, you're, there's not every kid in the neighborhood going out and playing a game of soccer, which, you know, I think we eventually might get to there. Um, but, it's you know, when I grew up, we played there. every sport, every single sport. We played it, whatever. We were always outside. But yeah, definitely. And, um, and, and, and Matt, I had a quick, a quick question. I was wondering yeah. if there if, if there's a guy you know that that loves soccer and is playing you know playing all through high school and and uh, college, is there you know is there a pathway for um, 
a soccer player to actually play uh, professionally, you know, in Europe. In, in Europe yeah, too? actually, that's a, I, even to take that question a, a step further. Has there been a guy from America go compete at a high level in Europe? Um, you know, I, I don't like to talk about things I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure on. Um, you know, yeah, exactly. But you know, there are pathways. Um, you know, I, I don't have the exact answer for that. I like to speak a little bit objectively. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, there are pathways. There's like semi pro teams that you know you can go and um, get those those opportunities. I know in college, they, there's like NAIA teams that go and and scrimmage, you know, D2 and D1 schools on purpose. So, you know, our JUCO teams on purpose, so they can actually go and, and give these kids opportunities to get scouted. So I could imagine there's something along those lines. Um, uh, part of me for not knowing it, it sent, uh, you know, exact information. Oh, no, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I think talent's talent, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, you, you see somebody out there doing extraordinary things. It, it, it's, it's not hard to see, right? And mm-hmm. so... Um, and, I, and I think it also boils down to, you know, um, you know, how bad somebody wants it. Like, you know, obviously it's going to cost some money to go get a trial out. Um, maybe that's pretty far away from your house. But, I mean, what about that guy in the NFL that, like, I don't know, squeezed his way into a tryout, right? And, like, <laughs> yeah. I think he was, like, living in his car, right? And it's yeah. like the dude wanted it. He trained every single day. Like, I don't think you doubt people like that. I don't think you doubt, you know. Um, so yeah, I would I would say there's definitely probably one specifically off the top of my head right now. I you know I don't have much information on that, but was Freddie? You know, I know there are pathways. Freddie sure. Adu was was American, wasn't he? Freddie, uh, yeah, I actually played with Freddie Adu back in those PDL days. Uh, oh, okay. Uh-huh. There and uh, he was uh, well, I guess I guess I was a year. He was a year. Him and he was with uh, Coco. We was going against Coco Expo. I don't think I was playing with. Him. Sorry about that. Uh, but he was uh, he was always there. He was a little tiny guy that was just rapid. But I think he was. Yeah, I don't know too much about Freddie. You know, pass right there. Yeah. So we but, yeah, listen, was, we we got yeah. a, we got an answer to that question. There okay. there are actually more than seventy Americans playing in various countries in Europe in all divisions. Mm-hmm. So that answers our yeah. question. But, but but the only thing about that though is there's different levels, correct, Matt? Like yeah, for sure. So so we, I guess that's that's kind of a open ended answer, right? Because you there's a bunch of guys over there playing European basketball as well, but it's not the highest of levels. Well, you look know? at look at I our get, collegiate get true, system. True, true, true. We're talking about the money. We want we trying <laughs> we to get to the money, though. AD. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> There's a ton of Europeans coming here to to play college ball here. I mean, I tell my players all the time, you know, you're competing with, you know, you're not just competing with that girl in Miami or that girl in California. Like, they're actually, like, I, I believe USF has, like, like three or four massive German girls on their team. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're dealing with that kind of competition, especially at the women's side now. I mean, if you really want to look at the grand scheme of U.S. soccer, it's not just a men's game. It's, you know, if if you really want, if you're really around the youth kids, every single young lady is walking around with a USA shirt on, right? Like USA, USA. You watch the young men around here, the young, you know, the young youth players, the, the boys. They're, it's Real Madrid. It's it's like you know overseas teams. But you know this this entire um, sport is taking off, and you know the one thing that. It's it's not just in America right now. It's taking off everywhere, especially the women's game. I mean, have you guys looked at the World Cup at all? Uh yes. yes They're that, competing. They I are. mean, it's crazy, yeah. you know. Uh, so it's really cool to see, man. And I'm a big proponent of of the development here in in the U.S. And I think, you know, um, it's got, it's it's on the right trajectory. I think so. Um, a lot of really good coaches. A lot of a lot of good people involved. So. Um, I'm, I'm great stuff. I'm, man. I'm, I'm optimistic. So, that. man, thank man, Matt. Thank you so much. This has been Thanks, man, this, man. It's been awesome having you on the show, man. You <laughs> yeah, share thanks. so much with uh, us and the listeners. Um, hope to have you back on the on, on the show soon. Yeah, man. Anytime. You know, you guys. Uh, I truly appreciate it. I hope you guys have a great one. All Take right. care. Take you care, too, buddy. man. All right, bye bye.
Oh, man, this is great, man. So, you know, it being here in the U.S., we don't get a chance to talk about uh, soccer too often, especially at this level. And uh, we're going to get some more answers and find out how many, you know, real, real um, American players do we have in Europe or in, you know, in some Spanish some <laughs> country playing, making making millions of dollars playing playing soccer. Definitely. We got, like I said, we got to get more of those inner city kids involved. Yeah, we got to do it. That's going to be fun. So, listen, guys, you've been listening to the Amateur's Edge here on 1010XL. Make sure you tune in next week at the same time for an amazing show. You've been listening to us on 92.5 FM. We'll see you next time. Till the next time.